This is Anderson Penn's podcast, episode number nine, for Sunday, July 22nd, 2012. This is Brian. This is Lisa. This is the Anderson Penn's Radio Network. Welcome. You were waiting for me to say something funny right I was, before you I start, was. right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of funny that I didn't, so. <laughs> Keeping me on my toes. I am. Um, let's talk about pen hunting today. Ooh. Uh, about Which four... is different than snipe hunting, right? Different than, that's right. <laughs> uh, about four months ago, uh, I was approached by a man who had a collection of pens he was thinking about selling. Uh, he didn't have everything together at the time, so over the course of a few months and a couple of phone calls, a meeting was finally set up for yesterday. Yay! We, uh, we got up early, skipped our weekly uh, trek to the local farmer's market so that we could make it over to his place on time. Uh, we got there, met his wife, sat down to look at his pens. Uh, he had had some nice ones, and there were some that had major issues as well. But uh, he didn't really use his pens. He just collected what he thought was nice or what was a good price at the, the local flea market or the antique mall or, or, or what have you over the years. So almost all of them needed some serious attention, if, if only a good cleaning and resacking. But for 300-plus pens, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, we made him a fair offer. And uh, he will get back to us. Crush fingers. Crush fingers, yeah. We, we were a little disappointed since we had uh, brought a bundle of cash. We drove five hours, uh, but he just wasn't quite ready to pull the trigger. Uh, we did leave with a, uh, a baggie of Esther books. Yay. Um, so at least we didn't leave empty-handed. Uh, had a nice lunch at the, the nearby Applebee's. And, oh, it was uh, yummy. Yeah, it was, was good. We and, needed that. And, uh, and we made our way back home. Now, one thing to keep in mind when buying pens in general um, is that usually this is a tough thing for a lot of people, especially when selling your entire collection. The seller generally has some kind of emotional attachment uh, and definitely a financial attachment as well. Uh, what the sellers need to realize is that when you're selling off an entire collection, not all the pens are like super awesome great and that the buyer takes the bad with the good uh, hoping that it balances out, while the seller may have paid X dollars, you know, years and years ago, that may or may not be what somebody will pay today. Uh, for people buying a collection, um, it's no picnic either. It's it's really quite challenging. You need to offer a price that won't insult the seller, but you need to leave yourself enough margin in the offer to account for pens that become parts pens, repair expenses, and breakage. Uh, you also have to account for the unexpected and unseen damage. Um, with this many pens, it just it just isn't possible to go through every pen with a, a fine-tooth comb unless you want to sit there for four or five hours or more, uh, which most of the time nobody wants you at their house for five hours. So. <laughs> or- <laughs> yeah, so uh, now if we're talking about exceptionally high-end pens, overlays, waterman patricians, then it's worth your time to examine those particular pieces carefully, but... There's just no need to examine every single ring top, pencil, junior sized pen, um, third tier, what have you. Uh, if there's damage, then you've got an equal value in parts usually, uh, assuming you, you have a nib. For higher end pens, you, you do pay the premium for pristine examples. And a, a hairline crack you didn't notice can be the difference between a uh, $500 pen and a $150 pen. So, anyway, keep your fingers crossed and uh, hopefully we'll be able we'll keep to. Keep posted. Uh, yeah. Come, come back with a, a nice large collection. Uh, this past week, I also picked up some something very unusual at a local antique mall. Now, I don't get to these places all that often. They're usually picked over pretty well, yep. um, sometimes by me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this particular piece had been sitting uh, in the display case for, for several months. If not longer. I mean, yeah. we've seen it several times. We have seen it, yeah. The funny thing is the last time I was there about a couple, a couple months ago, I was going to buy it, but I didn't have any cash on me, just my debit card. And since it was in the $3 cup, uh, I had to pass because I didn't ha- I couldn't find anything else in the store to make a $10 purchase so I could use the card. Much to my surprise, we went back last week. This item was still in the booth and was now 20% off. So um, <laughs> I, <laughs> Lisa liked that. You know, I get a yeah, deal on it. I like so, the deals. Yeah. So I came prepared and for $2.40... I picked up uh, this most interesting and unusual item. And uh, if you can see it here, 
Initially, I thought this was a mismatch, but now I'm not so sure. It's uh, it's hard rubber. Has the uh, the very distinctive you can see the very distinctive Aiken Lambert clip. It's marked Elco. It's got that little curve up the uh, up the end of it. Um, it's a very slender barrel. In fact, it's it's too slender to fit on on any Aiken Lambert that I, I currently have. Um, but it has and this. And you have a bunch. I have a few. Yeah, and it has this weird little contraption here on the end. I don't know what this part is. This is just a knob. It doesn't turn. And on this side, we have this little piece unscrews. And this is a hard rubber barrel too. This piece comes off and there's a little cross. You really can't see it here. There's a little cross in this particular piece and it looks like you could put a, a razor blade or something in it. Like a, uh, an old style exacto knife? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know what that is. But another interesting thing is it has a little pin. Probably, you probably can't see it. There's a pin right here that runs through the barrel. So I'm assuming that's that's holding this mechanism in. But never assume. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Is it, anybody, if anybody's ever seen anything like this, drop let me an email. Know. Yeah, let me know. But. I thought, you know, for three dollars, at least the clip, the, the Aiken Lambert clip is worth something. But the more I look at it, the more I realize this may actually be. It was intended to be this way, perhaps. So the find of the century <laughs> for two dollars and forty cents. <laughs> no. Now, if we could find an Aztec or a pregnant Parker for two forty, I'd be in heaven. Yeah, even two hundred and forty dollars would be. I know. Would be all right. So. A girl can dream. Two dollars and forty cents for an Aztec. I'm all over that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, let's see what we have uh, this week for eBay. You and your shopping, and yeah. and you know most men complain about women shopping. No, not in our household. Well, this next item, we <laughs> we, uh, we hope to be seeing in the mailbox soon. Uh oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um. Oh my God, not for that much. Waterman Ideal <laughs> 0524, uh, which means it's a gold fill, uh, taper cap, and a number four size nib, chase pattern gold filled. Uh, the price on the, now this item did not sell. That's crazy. Uh, it had six offers, but it's. Uh, a pretty pen, so I thought we'd show it. You know, it's in the original box. Look at this box, and it's quite unusual. Um, it's even got a little, it's, it's an overly large box. It's got a little cutout for the pen. It's got the directions that come with it. But as you can see, it's a beautiful um, full overlay on a taper cap, which is somewhat unusual. You don't see it all that often. You don't see an eight thousand dollar price tag all that often no, either. No, you don't. You don't. Now, is this worth it? Mm. I mean, I'm always the cheap one uh, between the two of us, and I will freely admit that. But yeah, it's, eight thousand dollars that better be. It's a lot of bread. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we've got an engraving here, so obviously it was uh, looks like R C. Good thing it wasn't uh, B A or L A. No, 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 no. But good condition. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. See. I mean, the engraving yeah. is gorgeous. and no. You can but, see the Waterman uh, imprint there at the end of the barrel. Nice. 800, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Because you know my birthday's coming up. Your birthday is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the birthday show next week. Don't buy that for no. my birthday. But uh, we, we had, it uh, looks like there were six offers on here. All of them were declined. Um, but interesting, uh, interesting, unusual Unusual pen, especially with the box. Actually, I kind of wish that they would have showed a little bit more of this box. It's kind of interesting. So, very cool. Pretty pen. Sticking with uh, the Waterman theme this week. Uh oh. Now this is this is interesting. You don't see these come up very often. This is the Waterman Sinograph Junior. Um, winning bid three hundred ninety nine dollars. One bit now. If you're not familiar with the Sinograph, Waterman made this contraption to allow you to sign multiple uh, checks, uh, documents at the same time. Very cool. And 
what it was essentially is, if you can see here, there are five eyedropper pens that are designed specially for this device. Uh, you'd fill them up and then you could write and it would, uh, it would sign your signature on all the documents at the same time. That's cool. You know, and it comes in a self, uh, its own little case. So when you're done, you can put the caps back on the pens and you're good to go. That looks like maybe, I don't know if these are original looking. They look a little different. They look new. Yeah, these, the little clamps here look new. Yeah. But uh, the case is, you know, still in, in, looks like it's still in good shape. Very, very interesting. Very uh, unusual. Yep. Yeah, usually this kind of thing no, didn't really survive. Sometimes you find the pens. The pens are a special uh, special pen just for this. After closing lay me on my back, it says. This will avoid ink flooding caps. So very cool. Um, unusual piece of ephemera. $399. Someone's going to have fun with this because there, there's not a lot to it. So... Uh, if it doesn't work, it, do it doesn't look like it would take all that much to get it working. So um, I don't know if it says if it works or not, but uh, I thought that was interesting. For $399, someone's going to have a lot of fun with that. Very cool. And lastly, now, this is uh -oh. this is a little departure from my, my normal, uh, normal eBay auction here. Oh, does that mean the beginning of a new collecting obsession? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, not, not in this case. <laughs> right. uh, this is a two-pen auction. We have uh, here, we've got a Waterman 52 Cardinal. Uh -huh. and, but what's, what struck my, uh, caught my, my attention here was not the Waterman, but uh, the, the larger item right here at the top, a Hawk in Gross pen. Now, if you're familiar with the size of a Waterman 52, you know that this top pen is a big, big, big pen. Um, and it's modeled hard rubber. Pretty. Now, yeah. I mean, look at the size of that nib on there. Now, we've got a crack. We've got a crack in the cap, but how mm. many Hawk and Gross pens do you find? Um, That's a big, big pen. Yeah, it's a number seven nib. Ooh, huge. Which is it's kind of an unusual number. Usually they're, you know, six, eight, but it's a number seven. Nice, nice marbling. Let's see what else do we have here. But it's a Chicago company, so big eyedropper. Now here's 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 the interesting thing. The the uh, I'm kind of skipping over the cardinal, but this is why it's amazing. This cap is still together. Oh. <laughs> Cracks running the length of the cap. I mean, this thing clearly was stepped on, rolled over something. Yeah, um, poor baby. Yeah, that cap is just destroyed, but it's still in one piece. Now, I don't know if they've they've tried to glue it together or not, but uh, um, not good pictures of the nib. Very but, cool. Uh, the, rest of, the rest of the pen looks great. So, you know, if you just happen to have a, a Cardinal 52 <laughs> cap lying around in the parts store, just you know, around. Uh, you'd be in good shape. Now, 132 bucks for these two pens, you know, that's not bad. Yeah, you've got a crack in the, in the, the Hawk and Gross, but... Um, when are you going to find another one? Just kind of a, a, a interesting, large, uh, second, third tier manufacturer. Very cool. Uh, 132 50, 12 bits. So we had some people that were, were very interested. Um, but uh, that's kind of it for, uh, for eBay this week. Ooh, that means we're safe. Uh, yeah, we are safe for another seven days. <laughs> What's, uh, what's I know, going this on? is kind of, kind of dangerous with you doing your eBay research. It's my research. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on with, uh, with Modern? We have uh, a couple new additions. New additions to the website, we do. Uh, this week, we received our long-awaited shipment of Rohrer and Klinger ink from Germany. Uh, now, we've been waiting on this for about a month, and tracking it, tracking it once and twice a day, trying mm -hmm. to figure out where the heck it is, what's taking so long. And we finally found out why. <laughs> uh, the entire box, uh, the bottom of the box, and this was a big box, uh, must have gotten wet. And it completely 
disintegrated it. It just kind of came off. So you had just the sides. Um, yeah, it was and, about what, uh, about two feet, two feet long, the box? Yeah, this was a big two box. Two feet by a foot and a half, maybe. Yeah, so the entire bottom of the box, just imagine that it's it's just shredded and disintegrated. Um, and thankfully, the ink was um, in two boxes inside the main box, and nothing was broken. Uh, it came to us wrapped in a very, very large, clear um, U.S. postal bag, and then it was uh, strapped together with those um, those heavy plastic, uh, I don't know what they're called, the, the wrapping straps you see on mm-hmm. on boxes of paper or really heavy things to keep everything together. A couple of the boxes were slightly dented. Um, so I guess that means we have to keep some of the ink, right? <laughs> the limited edition? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to keep a couple of those, well, I, I think. I found it funny that they actually included the bottom part of the, the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ripped off, they just I threw mean, it back in. <laughs> and the, the poor post office delivery girl, she was so apologetic, and she said that it happened in customs, which is possibly why it was in customs for, you know, two and a half weeks. Um, and she was all apologetic. She's kind of dripping styrofoam peanuts across the lawn as she's bringing it up and and it was uh oh, really that's what that's what those were we yeah. saw this morning on our on our walk our it was peanuts kind of are all over the, yeah. the, the, the neighborhood so. <laughs> oh that's funny yeah so it was it was entertaining we uh we also got in some looks like some backstock noodlers yep um in our exciting shipment this week which uh, oh, yeah. sort of sort of hit us by surprise. Uh, <laughs> we forgot a, about it. Yeah, we forgot about it. We ordered it in uh, what was it March? Uh, yes. Back in in Little Rock. In Little Rock, yeah. Uh, at dinner was a large box of the amazingly stunning Omas 360 vintage uh, limited edition demonstrators, the oh, turquoise. Yeah. Wow, those are some pretty pens. Yeah. Um, I need to count them on a regular basis to make sure that someone <laughs> hasn't uh, acquired one. Uh, I think there's an anniversary or some some holiday coming up pretty soon. Isn't yeah, but there? I don't want one. Well, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you want one for my birthday? Yes, I think that would be uh, <laughs> it would be a nice gesture. That would be different. Yeah. Uh, check out the the pictures on the website or Facebook. We've got them up. Um, we have a do have a special price on them, so. Uh, Shoot us an email if uh, if it's something you're interested in. They come in an ice box, uh, presentation box, uh, a little leather sleeve, which is really nice. Each piece, of course, individually numbered, uh, limited to 360 worldwide, 180 in the United States. Um, comes with a bottle of ink as well. A nice bottle of ink, yep. Yeah. So it's, they're gorgeous. You got to just check out the color on yep. the in the pictures, if nothing else. Just gorgeous pens. Mm-hmm. Yep, very pretty. So. Uh, let's see. One of the other things to arrive um, is the Noodler's uh, Clear or Demo Rollerball. What? I know. It's very cool. Um, this might be the you only said, pen the that word. Brian lets me use without giving me grief. <laughs> uh, piston filler. Uh, I love that it's clear so you can see the ink, uh, the color, and the ink level. Uh, the convenience of a rollerball with the variety of uh, fountain pen ink options. What's not to love? Let's, so see, let's see that. The pen. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So piston fill, just very cool little rollerball. Writes really well. So I was very excited. I just uh, felt the need to uh, take one out just for a tester because you know yeah. people at shows are going to want to. Well, actually, it does. It. it does write pretty nice. I think I used it uh, the other night at dinner. So yeah, uh, they, they did, actually it is a, a really good pen for the price. So yeah, and the uh, the the rollerball portion is removable. Yep, and um, they, uh, they offer replace replacement uh, rollerball pieces. So if you mess with, uh, if, if you're hard on yours, like I am mine, uh, you can just replace that part and keep going. So yeah. really, uh, really interesting, uh, convenient options. Yeah, well, you know, it reminds me, and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't tell you I was going to do this, but uh, I actually do own a rollerball what? similar to that. You do not. I do too. I, <laughs> seriously. Here it is right here. What is that? This is a German-made pan. I believe it's German. You own a rollerball? I do own a rollerball. We've been married for how long, and I'm just learning this now? 
What else are you going to spring on me on, on public radio here? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but if you can see that there, it's got okay. this this removable tip. This part is actually unscrewable, just like an Esterbrook. This comes out. Um, you can see and this do you here. use it? or I, I, have, it just... I have used it, yeah. Actually, I, I may resurrect it now because it's kind of, this whole part comes out. Oh, so just you're just like jealous so. that I got the new rollerball so. and now you want to get yours out. And, uh, and it's, it's transparent. <laughs> what? Um, and then it has a blind cap here. And it also is a piston filler. Oh, very cool. So. All right. Anyway. So we could compare yeah. rollerballs. We could, yeah. The, the, now, the, the, the disadvantage here is, is I cannot replace this because <laughs> I ah. only have the one. But So my rollerball is better than your rollerball. Uh, yours does. Oh, this has a very cool. No, maybe not. <laughs> cap, cap band on it. You can't really see it. Yeah, that, I can't beat that. But yeah. So anyway. So, <laughs> so, just, so sorry, it's already derailed the conversation. There. <laughs> so that's the rollerball conversation <laughs> for the week. Uh, let's see. We <laughs> what got else some, is some up? Ink, ink swabs or something coming up. Uh, new ink swabs up on the site later today. Uh, along with uh, a new ink review and a new blog post uh, up in the next couple days. So yeah, sorry, keep checking I didn't, back. Didn't get the blog post up last week for you, but I know we'll, we'll get it up soon. Yep. So uh, how about you? What's uh, on the workbench? I know you've been busy with uh, like the real job thing. So anything new and exciting? Uh, well, you know, uh, the, the usual assortment this week. And now I, you can see here, I now have a a bookshelf to, to put the repairs on <laughs> instead of them being on my desk. But uh, of note this week, uh, we got something in the mail that we've been waiting for for uh, a couple weeks now, a uh, couple months, I think. Is it that long? It has been that long. Yeah. Wow. Um, our friend Steph uh, uh, from Grand Mia Pens, uh, he does a lot of YouTube videos and uh, he has a tool he's specially designed for Waterman lever boxes. Yep. We uh, love so, tools. When it, when you have a when you're trying to replace a lever box and if you've ever done it they have the tabs that are on the end that you need to bend down and that you need to to, to bend it back into place well they're very difficult they're they're a pain uh, and he has a special tool and so I, I sent him a I think it was a message via Twitter and I said that's a cool tool where can I get one and he dropped one in the mail uh, except we never actually got it <laughs> it's never it's never arrived. So, Poor Steph. He kept asking and asking, yeah. has it gotten here yet? Has it gotten here yet? And we go to the post office box every day, and it never arrived. Yeah. So, And, and it's, it's coming from England. Uh, and so he, he was kind enough to, to make another one and send it to me. And, and there it is. You can kind of see it. Uh, it looks sort of like a little golf club on one end. You know, and then on the other end, it's just a little... A little bit cool. of a hook, uh, but you can use this end here, this end that looks like the golf club, to uh, to press the tab back up on the on the lever box, and then you use this end here to to tighten it up. So very cool. Um, thanks, Steph, and uh, we'll be putting it to use uh, soon. I haven't haven't got a chance to try it yet, but um, it looks like a real great tool. So yeah, and. Thank you for your patience, and uh, we'll we'll let you know if the other one shows up finally. Someone's repairing lever boxes at the post office, I think. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, so. or in customs. It just sat with the uh, R and K ink for a while. Uh, how about uh, we have some Estherbrook discussion this week? Uh, we do, we do. Okay. Um, dip pen nibs. Oh, okay. You, yep, you see them all over eBay. Those little red and black boxes with. Uh, uh, I think up to 12 dozen or 144 dip pen nibs in them uh, with a three-digit number. Uh, we received many emails about these. And no, I'm sorry to say, these will not fit into your J or your Pastel or your other normal, regular filling system Estabrooks. These were made uh, much earlier, uh, designed for dip pens only. They do look like a really awesome deal with so many nibs in the box. You think you're all set for life when, in fact, they won't fit into your pen. And sorry, but you've gotten all excited for nothing. Stick with the renew points in the tiny individual boxes. Those will fit into your pens. Yep. They also have uh, surprisingly very little value. Uh, to Sadly. 
Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Esterbrook was pushing these things out upwards of 600,000 a day at their peak. And I get emails all the time from people who who think they uh, what they have is worth a small fortune only to be disappointed uh, when I tell them that if they can get 10 bucks for them, they're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> so... So uh, when you're looking for Estabrook nibs or uh, if someone, you know, offers you a box and you think, oh, my God, you know, a 144 or maybe there's only 82 or whatever in the box, double check yep. that it's not the dip pen box of nibs because you, you will be disappointed. Yep. So, so. Uh, let's see. What about pen shows? Pen shows this week. Yeah, um, this weekend going on right and now right as we speak. As we speak, uh, Miami Pen Show, um, and it sounds like uh, from the reports that we've heard thus far, it's been a really good show. Yep. Uh, for no other reason than a buying opportunity. There have been rumors of uh, Waterman four fifty six LEC, which is a uh, uh, Sterling number six size nib, big pen. Uh, LEC stands for lower end covering. Uh, lower end is is covered. Uh, an acid etched uh, version overlay walked in the door. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I saw one. They're they're really hard to find. Uh, a Toledo, uh, some vintage Mont Blancs, and all sorts of other things walking in the door from from showgoers for sale. So awesome! Um, you know, you never know who's going to walk in with a you know a, a little checkbook size box of pens that they they found in their desk drawer. Yep. So. Sounds like it's a good show. Can't wait to hear the full report uh, next week once uh, once people get back. Yep. Burt puts on a good show. So uh, let's see. Speaking of shows, DC coming up fast. Yep. Um, Brian totally freaked me out and reminded me it's like, what, three weeks? Two and a half weeks. Uh, let me check here. Too close. <laughs> three weeks? Uh, I want to say it's, uh, to be exact. Tell me it's three. <laughs> Uh, seven, 17 days, 23 hours, and 38 minutes before we leave? All right, two and a half. <laughs> two and <laughs> a half weeks. Who's counting, um, really? I mean, yeah. yeah. But who's counting? Uh, we just got our table reservations uh, in the past week. Uh, four tables, and then the PCA table will be next to us, manned by the lovely Rachel Shubin, uh, so that uh, renewal questions and all that can be handled right there. So awesome. I'm excited about that. But four tables. And uh, our good friend... Uh, Tim Byler, uh, again, for those of you who didn't hear this before, uh, Tim Byler has agreed to let us rent him for the weekend, and uh, he will be manning the table with us. So please come by and, and come see Tim. Well, you know, <laughs> shows are a lot of fun as it is, but <laughs> with Tim there, it's going to be crazy. It's just, oh, yeah. It's going to be a real good time. So, yeah. And, and he takes his, uh, he and his brother Mike like to joke around that they are the, the presidential bodyguards. So, uh, I'm not worried about security with Tim there. <laughs> He's got our back. What else is going on this week? Um, PCA News. Okay. The summer pennant will be going to print this coming week. Uh, so awesome. watch your mailboxes for the, new, the newest issue in two weeks or less. Uh, we also received confirmation that uh, Paul Arano will continue on as editor for another two years. So that's awesome, awesome news. And we will have a really cool surprise for all DC show attendees. Ooh, what? Uh, well, I can't tell you. It's a surprise. Well, you can tell me. No, well, one, no one else is a, listening. Let's just say you'll be getting something free. Just can, can you whisper it? No. <laughs> something free for all the show attendees. Okay. So keep awesome. your eyes open. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, other big personal news. Uh, our pen room which is going to be more like a pen wing of the house, uh, is coming along. The building supplies were delivered on Thursday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, 40 <laughs> sheets of drywall and over 100 two-by-fours and five-gallon buckets of paint and three-gallon yep. buckets of joint compound. That's a lot of joint compound, mm -hmm. yep. by the way. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That's what Joe said to, to buy. Joe said get it, so yep. we got it. Uh, but all of that was delivered on Thursday, and so uh, the carpenter and the plumber will be here in the next week um, to get started. It's going to be amazing. Cool. Uh, once we get the electricity turned back on, uh, we'll take some before shots to compare to the after shots. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah, it'll be nice. Does that mean we get to 
take all those pens out of the, the living room and put them somewhere? The living room, <laughs> the closet, the bedroom, both of our offices. Well, you know, if, if, if you need some help with that, I think the, uh, the Omos 360s, uh, I, can, I can help lighten the load. Maybe take... Yeah, I think we're good. We're good? I have okay. a special place for those okay. in the pen room, so we're good. Okay. Under lock and key. <laughs> I have the only key. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think that's that's it for this week. Uh, right. Comment and suggestions for topics. Use your pens. Write to us at Anderson Pens, P.O. Box 732, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54912. Or catch us online. Uh, email brian at andersonpens.net. Or lisa at andersonpens.net. Uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash andersonpens. Facebook is facebook.com slash andersonpens. Uh, we are on the web, andersonpens.net. There's a theme somewhere. Uh, blog, andersonpens.net slash blog. Uh, join the mailing list for advance notice of upcoming events or pre-orders. Thanks for listening to our podcast. See you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.